Hi everybody, very welcome to Mentor, yet another video podcast. As always, I hope you're all doing fantastic. So, today on the podcast, I am going to touch on the finer details on how to work together with colleagues in the cockpit in order to keep the CRM flowing well, like a well-oiled machinery, and uh, how to, um, to deal with people and you're sitting in a really, really small space for a lot of time. So, the things I'm going to take up today you will not find in any um, books, all right? These are things that I have picked up during my time as a first officer and my time as a captain and subsequently as a training captain and a TRI TRE. Um, so they will be my own opinions, okay? As always, this is what I think and it doesn't re- um, necessarily kind of represent what everyone else thinks. But I do think that there are some points in here that's probably worth listening to. So stay tuned to watch the end, as always. Right, so um, most of you guys have probably worked together with people that you didn't really get along with. Um, you, it might have been uh, your superiors, your bosses in previous work, or it might have been just colleagues. All right. Now imagine if you would be sitting with these people inside of an office that's about two and a half square meters big, and those people would be able to see, hear everything you do, and also be allowed to criticize it. Now that sounds like a recipe for disaster, doesn't it? But that is the reality of being an airline pilot because you will be sitting for sometimes up to 12 hours straight together with the same person inside of a cockpit doing really, really safety and critical things. Okay, so how do we actually do this? Well, there are a number of CRM courses available um, that we all go through. It, you will go through it as part of your um, initial training, but and you will also go through it as part of your remedial kind of ongoing training once you get employed by an airline. Um, I'm not going to go in too deeply into what those CRM courses contain. They contain, contain a, a number of great things like uh, you know what to think about the communication, threat or error management, and things like that. However, what I'm going to talk about is more common sense things, things that you guys need to think about in order to, for you to be successful with whoever you're working with. Um, you will not get along with everyone. You might think that you will get along with all pilots now, but you will not because we are all a little bit different. We are, you have, we have different interests. We have different ways of, of kind of explaining things and talking and stuff like that. It's just natural. So how do we actually work together with a person like that? Well. The first and foremost thing which I have touched on on previous podcasts and I will touch on again is respect. It's as easy as that. All right. Think now how you, when you envision yourself as a pilot, think about how you are expecting that people would be looking at you and treating you, how you expect that your colleagues will be interacting with you in the cockpit. Just take a moment and think about what your vision of that is. Quite neat, isn't it? Now, the shortest way of explaining this is that if you treat your colleagues in that same way all the time, no matter who they are, you will be fine. Your cockpit work will work fine. And uh, all of your colleagues will think that you're a swell guy to fly with. Now, why is that? Well, that is because that is how we as humans work. Uh, most of you have a vision of uh, being treated with respect, also being told off when you're doing something wrong, but in a way that is constructive and positive, right? This means that it is very likely that if you are doing the same, when you point out someone's mistake or when you are interacting with someone, they will think that you are doing it in a great way. So it's really not much harder than that, okay? We all have, in order for us to be able to work inside of a cockpit, we have a set of uh, what's called SOP, Standard of Standard Operating Procedures, where we are all the time aware of what should be done at any single moment. All right? This means that every single flight, uh, will, you will hear the same call-outs and the same procedures all the time. And the reason for that is that we always have to be able to predict what the other person is supposed to do. 
that way we'll be able to find any errors or if we if they are becoming encapsulated or if they're just you know thinking of something else we can point it out now how we point that out is extremely important and now we're getting into the kind of finer bits of crm so once again if you think back to how you would like to be treated now you would probably be aware that you at some point in your life have made a mistake that you've made an error and certainly if you're doing flight training you're well aware that you make errors every single day in every single flight right now do you think that that is going to change when you get into the cockpit of an airliner probably not you will become more and more um, proficient which means that you will make less and less errors hopefully as you build experience but you will not be able to eliminate errors. It's impossible. It's human to err. Everyone does. All companies agree to this. It is kind of a part of being human. Now, this means that if you're working together with someone, this is the reason, by the way, we're, that we're two of us. It's one of the many reasons, but it's one of the reasons that there are two pilots is that we can pick up each other's errors, right? How to do this is you need to do it in a constructive and positive way, in a way that, the, that your colleague feels that you're actually trying to help. Now, if you achieve this, it means that you can point out any error at any point and they will be happy with it, okay? And I want to, make this, uh, I want to take this opportunity as well to stress that any time that you see an error in a flight deck that has safety implication, it needs to be pointed out immediately and in an on you know in a way that it cannot be misinterpreted so if there's safety implications it's better to speak up and do it immediately than trying to kind of circumnavigate the issue now, i've been talking about this in a previous video as well where i said that you can um if you see an error is about to commit that you can kind of rephrase uh, pointing it out as a question but i want to just emphasize that that is for minor Things, okay, things that you don't really understand um, what your, your colleague is doing, but doesn't have safety implications. That can be a good way. It can, if you don't understand what your colleague is doing, it's always good to form it as a question. And that way they can kind of articulate what they're doing and maybe you'll understand it or maybe they will understand that they've made an error and they will rectify it. But whenever there are safety implications, um, steps away, serious steps away from the SOPs, for example, it needs to be pointed out. However, the way you point it out should again be felt like it is in a constructive and positive manner to get the aircraft back into safe flight um, i'm going to give you some example now it's really really hard to explain this because it comes to common sense it comes to how you interact with people in all kinds of work not only in the cockpit but in, in your whole way of life but um, for example as an examiner i often get to see different people work together under really stressful environments, okay? There are things going wrong in the simulator and they are trying to solve it in the best possible way. What can happen sometimes is that you see, especially first officers that are about to, to reach um, command, they want to show the TRE that they are ready for command and the way that they do it sometimes, not always, but sometimes, is by scoring points on the other which means they are pointing out mistakes that the other one is doing, not to rectify the situation, but to show the TRE that they see that there's an error being done. Okay. This might sound very similar to just pointing it out, but there is a very, very clear dis uh, difference because the other person will very quickly realize that the first person is trying to score points on them. And you can see it, it's just like throwing sand into a machine. All of a sudden, the other one will start to get pissed off and they will build this up. And it will be, let, the, the CRM will just kind of grind, not to a halt, but it will start working really, really badly. Now, on the opposite side of that, I can also see, because from the back there, you see practically everything. I can also see when there is two pilots working together and one pilot realizes that there's an error about to be made. And I can see them kind of, you know, kind of putting a finger up, pointing at the flap lever that they think it's probably time to, to start configuring for the landing or just kind of very, very, very in a soft voice whispering to the other like, yeah, do you want to, do you want to, do you want to uh, configure? When I see that, because I see it, I see a couple of things. First of all, I see that there was a, an error that was about to be committed. However, the crew as a crew 
solved it. Okay, that's number one. The other one, which makes me really happy, and this makes me warm when I see it, is I see that there is an absolute, honest, constructive thought from one pilot who really wants not only that the um, the error is being solved, but he also wants to to avoid the theory from seeing that it was about to be happened, which means that he's wanting really to help the other person. From the bottom of his, his or her heart, they want to rectify the situation in a good way and in, from a CRM perspective, an efficient way. And you can see it immediately because the other pilot becomes really grateful immediately. Says, oh, sorry, yes, uh, flaps one, please. And the first one says, oh, good, three checks, flaps one, just like nothing had happened. And they instantly like each other. And from that point on, that crew will try to help each other for the rest of the exercise and they will come up in, um, with a result that is phenomenal most of the time. So you can see the difference between the crew of where one tried to score a point on the other and the crew where one sincerely wanted to help each other is that the CRM, the way that they work together, is going to be so much more efficient in the latter crew. Okay? And this is what I'm trying to what I'm trying to, to get across to you guys that if you sincerely want to help out and you think a little bit on how you address the other pilot, it is likely that the other pilot will appreciate your efforts and the CRM will be working like the fine oil machine that it's supposed to be. Okay. Now, for some other tips, um, I've had some questions from people wanting to know if you're a really young um, first officer in your 20s and you're working with a very senior captain that might have been working in a flag carrier for his entire life, there, there's, it's a likelihood that there is a world of difference between how you kind of deal with things. Now, these the things I'm going to tell you now uh, are things that I learned when I was a first officer, okay? And they might not work for everyone and some of you might think that it sounds silly, but if you're working with a person like that, once again, you have to imagine yourself in his or her position. Uh, just think about how you would like to, if you were a senior captain, how you would like to be uh, treated and treat them that way. This means doing small signs of respect, showing them respect. And this goes into things like, for example, carrying the paperwork. So you've done the pre-flight briefing, you take the paperwork and you bring it out to the aircraft, no questions asked. It means things like you maybe be opening the door to the aircraft, but you still let the captain be the first one to, to enter, to let check the tech log. Um, in some companies it might be a good idea to call them sir until they tell you not to or madam. Uh, they're, they're tiny little things like this that in a modern world might sound really obsolete and really silly, but in fact, if you do it, it's a show of intent from your side that you want to treat them with the respect that they've earned over the years. Okay? So if you do this, those tiny little things, they will get you far when it comes to how they will see you as a, as a pilot. Now, last point I want to make before, because this is getting really long, is that the one thing that will determine how the CRM works between you and your colleague is how good you know your shit, okay? It comes down to that. Ultimately, the we need to rely on each other. So if you are well prepared, if you're well studied, if you have read up where you're going, you know the airfield brief that you're going to, you've read up on the chart, uh, you know your SOPs, that will be very, very um, obvious very quickly, okay? So the better prepared you are, the more you know your work, the easier the CRM will be as well. Because the captain or the first officer, if you are a captain, will very quickly realize that I'm dealing with a competent person. If you on top of that is a really nice person and you treat the other with respect, uh, you will have no problems. So on those final words, I want to finish this podcast off. As always, I hope that you're all doing fantastic. I hope this has been helpful for you.